Come on, beloved, let's keep going here. So we're on verse 14, 15. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. He's talking about those that use the scriptures, the word of God, in a false way. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. So the great fraternities and sororities, he's shown me they're very wicked because of the wickedness that they do, the sorceries that they do. That's why Jesus said that the rich men, the mighty men were the great men of the earth, for by the, thy sorceries were all nations, plural, deceived. And so in Isaiah 34, 2, it says, The indignation, indignation of the Lord is upon all all nations and his fury upon all their armies he hath utterly destroyed them he hath delivered them to the slaughter all right so we're on 17 for the arms of the wicked shall be broken but the lord upholdeth the righteous the lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever they shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the lord shall be as the fat of lambs they shall consume into smoke shall they consume away the lord reminded me of maui the fire how quickly that came um and there were wicked among them uh wicked very very wicked ones um so in verse 21 he showed me that i'm not talking about the indigenous of of maui i'm talking about the the wicked who are part of this group um, verse 21, the wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. So Jesus said that the, the, um, the children of this world are free. Okay. So they don't have to pay taxes. They don't have to pay things. They're the ones receiving all of the money. Jesus, uh, through Daniel, Daniel said that he, the vile man was a raiser of taxes I remember the indigenous tribes didn't have taxes before that. And Jesus, whenever he was here, he we said, you know, whose who's image is on this coin? So an image on a coin. And they said, Caesar's. Pay Caesar's what Caesar's. So there's images on the coins. And that is what he's showing us that, you know, we're part. This is, this is Rome that brought the taxes. This is uh, the same thing that was during Jesus' time. But they all claim to be from uh, they all claim to be jew so um but the the jewish priests of his time were handing um his people jesus and his people his apostles and stuff over to be slaughtered by them and the romans would kill uh the the christians the believers the israelites even the jews who believed in jesus jesus was a jewish man you know an israelite and so they were killing their own people um, using not just Rome, but they would stone them themselves. They would kill them themselves. So um, this is the same thing that's been going on from the beginning. There's a family that loves money more than God, and they become a vessel or a cage of every foul spirit and hateful bird. Like Jesus said, ye serpents, you know, in Matthew 23. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. So what was who's the cursed one? Well, we look in Genesis 3. The serpent was a beast, a cunning, subtle beast that deceived Eve. And that's what we see in Revelation, that the kings of the earth, the mighty men, are deceivers. And what did they do? What happened to the serpent? He was cursed by God. So you see in this verse 22, the, the cursed Okay, so God says that we will crush the head of the serpent. The serpent in, in Genesis 3 was cursed, a cursed beast. What's in Revelation? There's a serpent, a dragon, a the devil, um, Satan, and he is cast in the lake of fire for deceiving the nations, plural. That's why in Isaiah 34, 2, the same thing you see in Revelation of Jesus Christ, the nations that, do, that, that are not written in the book of life, the nations where they all come to Greek fraternities, they go and learn witchcraft and they go back to the nations and they they do things, sorceries on their neighbors in order to make money to get rich. They are the merchants of the earth. They rule the world. Um, now, some of, I believe in the past, I don't know, 10 years or so, I mean, there's people within Greek 
fraternities in Rome that repent. There are some of them that repent. So can a tax collector repent? Yes, they can. Um, if they were doing it in ignorance or if they realized what they're doing, they can repent. You know, that's what the Lord is showing us. Everyone can repent. You know, we all fall short of the glory of God, but he's showing you who the wicked are and how they get rich. It's it's just really obvious that they're sorcerers. They're li they do it through lies, through covetous practices and idolatry and coming in and forcing their way into other people's land, their heart, their mind, as we said in the last video. And so this um, is how they, they get a hold on people. And there are spirits involved with this. And that's why Jesus, he said, ye serpents, because there is a serpent behind that, their works, okay? There's a serpent behind their works, like Saul. He had scales over his eyes and his ears because something was influencing him and had covered him. Um, it says in the scriptures that the, that the those that don't believe, don't believe because the God of this world has blinded their eyes and their ears that they may not hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So, um, the steps of a good man, let's see, is that, do we keep going? Yeah, to 28. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. We see that in the book of um, in the New Testament, that all of the apostles, you know, one apostle was um, shipwrecked, and there's other apostles, they, they said, you know, um, I fall, but I get back up. You know, God holds us up. Praise the Lord. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Do we? We have the bread of life, Jesus Christ, and we get the 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 word of God is like comforting to us because we know we have the right God. <laughs> Hallelujah! And it's like comfort. The bread. It's a, bread is comforting when you eat it. Verse 26, he is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. 27, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. He won't forsake you, beloved. If you're a saint with a genuine, sincere heart, he's not going to forsake you. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And we see that in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, beloved brethren. We see that they're cut off. Um, turn with me to Psalm 12. It says, they speak in verse 2, they speak vanity, every one with, the, with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Now, that I don't know if I told you guys about this experience that I had where I saw the devil-headed, um, it was like a dragon thing. It was all black. And it had two heads, and the two heads were like, um, like God says, they're double tongue. They're double, like a serpent has two sl a slit, and and it's got two, it's got like a double tongue. That's why God calls them serpents because, you know, they speak double talk. Okay, they'll they'll just like this because they have a double heart, and so they like a serpent. They're speaking, and that's why Matthew twenty three is real important to, to read because yeah. it explains to you why Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. When you look at Mystery Babylon in Revelation of Jesus Christ, you'll see in, in uh, Revelation 17 who she is. And her fornicating children are the seed of Satan. So she is in them and becomes their, uh, she's their parent. And the spirit of iniquity is in their forehead. Okay, that's what's in their forehead. So it says, um, let's see, did we read all of it? The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. They're very proud. I've, I've dealt a lot with the Greek fraternities and sororities. Um, the ones that repent, they get humbled by the Lord's word um, and, get, and come into faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, uh, for every soul that repents. We pray that all of them repent and believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God. And that he died for their sins and was buried and resurrected from the grave. Um, but unfortunately, it says in the book of Revelation of Jesus, they he tells them to repent and to stop worshiping idols and things made with gold and, and bowing to, to these things and serving and doing witchcraft to stop their murders and to stop all of these things. 
but the scriptures say they don't repent. Okay, they just don't repent. They keep on with their wicked ways, so God has to righteously judge them. Who have said with our heart, tongue, with, with our tongue, we will prevail. So the verse 4 of Psalm 12, who, who have said with our tongue, we will, will we prevail? So they're going to speak uh, with their serpent tongue, and they think they're going to prevail. In the end, it, it comes to nothing. And as we see during Jesus' time, you know, all of those that were destroyed in 70 AD and that second temple was destroyed, all those people were destroyed. They were conquered uh, by, by Rome and they were destroyed and spread throughout the nations, even during the time before um, all the people were spread throughout the nations. So, you know, God brings judgment. It says, uh, they, they say, our lips are our own. <laughs> Who do you think but God... It, throughout the scriptures, God says that he's the one that puts words in people's mouths. <laughs> so we can't say that our lips are our own. He even put words into uh, God's children's enemies. So, uh, you know, we got to praise him and worship him. He, he's the one that, you know, orders our steps. So they say, who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. See, the, the proud, they puffeth at God's children, and they say there is no God. And you see here, they, they say their own lips, you know, they will prevail by their tongue and their own lips or their own. And they say, who is Lord over us? I just had a guy after giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, actually, it wasn't giving the gospel of Jesus Christ today. It was just speaking the word of God with power, with the trumpet. Um, and so one guy said, God is dead. He was a professor, and he came at me like he was going to kill me. And he had an umbrella in his hand, and he looked like he was someone who is a proclaiming Jew. <laughs> of course, they hate Jesus. And he was coming at me as if he was going to kill me. And he said, God is dead. Okay, that's what they believe. And I believe it's because they want to rule in the earth. So they have forgotten God because they want to rule and reign. And that's why NASA, NASA means deceit in Hebrew, beloved. And the Hebrews, the um, those that say they are Jews and do lie are the synagogue of Satan. They have been running NASA since the inception of it. Okay, so you have to wonder about some of the things that we learned in history because a lot of it is L-I-E, lie, okay? Um, it says in, uh, what scripture is that, Lord, where they say, oh yeah, Psalm 2, it says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. It says something about they forget God. That's the one I was looking for. The kings of the earth forget God. Uh, wherever that is. They forget God. Okay, where were we? Psalm 12. So, here we are. So, they puff it also. The Holy Spirit's just reminding me of the scripture. Um. He says, knowledge puffs up. So this man that came at me today was a professor, and he had books in his hand. And all the students look up to him. But what are they teaching them? They're teaching them lies, beloved. They're deceiving them, teaching them philosophy falsely and science falsely. And they're, they, they're angry because they know that God is judging, and he's showing the people that he is alive, that he's alive and well. Jesus was dead, but he's alive. And he's about ready to uh, do what he said he was going to do in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ and burn up their cities. Well, their cities are burning, but what's going to happen is, see, they made their palaces, it says in other scriptures, that they made their palaces in between the waters. So between heaven and the, the gall of bitterness below. And so that man was bitter. So they're making their palaces off of all mankind, the, the waters, okay, here in, in this place. And between us, they're trying to, you know, imagine a puppet 
and they're moving the puppet wherever they want it. They're making people like puppets able to move them however they want to move them. And God, for a time, has shown them favor and allowed them to keep alive who, whoever they wanted to keep alive and to kill whoever they wanted to kill. So they kept the wicked alive and killed the just, like Jesus, the apostles, the prophets, the saints, the indigenous tribes of every nation, tribe, and tongue. And now God is turning and judging those nations. So it says that the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times thou shalt keep them O lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted so if you google the education act and you see the signing of it in the executive office everything that the students are learning like i said are from those black hat wearing proclaiming jews which jesus said those that say they are jews and do lie and are the synagogue of satan in the book of revelation of jesus christ he says i will bring them before you and they shall bow before your feet so they are the ones that are responsible for this lgbtq movement in the education teaching these children abominable things they set their kings up from the greek fraternities jesuits shriners all of these people are their servants they use them and they use them to rule and reign to get the wealth to oppress the poor as the scriptures talk about they deceive the nations and do sorcery and what they're doing to the children is so that they can hold them captive hold their souls so that those devils can possess them so that they would be oppressed this is like a stumbling block casting it before the children of Israel to stumble them to stumble them to trouble God's people and these they, this is how the spirits get a dominion over a vessel is through these wicked practices these wicked ways that's why God had all the sodomites killed in the land because it brings in um, unclean spirits evil spirits so Jesus can deliver it, people from from these things he he cast out devils out of um, a legion of devils out of one man. So he's good. God is good. Okay, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 2.15. Praise the Lord for all this understanding. This is his word. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. 2.15. And it reads, Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and, ha and are contrary to God all men what are these <laughs> well who killed the prophets and persecuted us well jesus said in matthew 23 who that was let's turn to matthew 23 read all of that scripture it's he says ye in verse 33 23 33 they knew who they are they use these two numbers quite a bit in their occult practices and they flash these numbers all the time because that's who they are they know who they are okay jesus said ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell wherefore behold i send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes and some of them ye shall kill and crucify and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah son of Berechiah as whom ye slew between the temple and the altar beloved what does the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ say in Revelation 17 it talks about the cup of the blood being on their head. All right. Same exact thing during our generation. This is the wicked. This is this is the wicked generation. So Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw a woman, the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherein didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. So these these are this is the 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 um, ones that come up, the kings of the earth 
Turn with me to Revelation chapter 18, verse um, 23. Again, they know who they are. And they use the scripture to make money, okay? They, they become people who sell things or get famous on YouTube for, you know, notice I've been here for a long time and I only have a few subscribers because I'm not after money. Okay. If you worship, uh, and I'm not going to say that because some people who are genuine believers do have a lot of followers. I'm not going to say that, but there are people out there that are monetizing their videos for money. Okay. Not everyone that does that is of the wicked one. There are some believers, true, genuine, sincere believers who have the spirit of the living God who are, you know, just making money, but not because they love money. It, it's not, they're not doing it. They're not using the scriptures with deception or cunning works or twisting the scriptures. Anyways, let's get back to Revelation eighteen twenty three. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Isn't that what the serpent did in Genesis 3? So I'm going to stop this one and understand these are contrary to all men, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 2.15. These are serpents, beloved, vipers. These are the ones that worship the, the, um, the serpent, the dragon, okay? And um, we see in Epistle of Jude, we see who they are also. Now, there's fire coming for them if they don't repent. Um, I hope that they do. I pray for everyone. And if you will with me, let's give a prayer up for all those that heard the word today. And every time I've ever spoken a word to anybody about Jesus or about God's truth by the spirit of truth. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just come to you as beloved brethren. And I know that my brothers and sisters are with me. In this prayer, we pray for the lost to be found, Heavenly Father, and that they would be found and, and know that Jesus is the true Messiah and that they would know that, that he's the son of the living God. And we pray together in unity, in the love, in the spirit, in the love of one another, mm -hmm. that you would help the cold hearted, the stony hearts, that you would change their hearts, that you would bring them to the knowledge of who God is. God, you're a spirit. You are love. And your love is different than the world's love. And people don't understand that, but you're helping them to understand that. Lord, you said that all men would know righteousness at the end. And Jesus is the righteousness, is our righteousness. So we just thank you for him. And we just lift up everyone that's watching and pray for healing and uh, encouraging, encouragement and um, anything that they might need to get through this time of the perseverance of the saints. We just bless your name, praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, beloved brethren, agape love to you in Jesus' name.